Guys, ChaseChaseWins.com, Saturday, the 26th of March. Excuse my voice, guys. If you can't tell, I damn near lost my voice at the game last night. Go Heels, taking down UCLA, winning outright to advance to the Elite Eight. They will play tomorrow, and I could not be more excited. Um, they're going to have a tough one tomorrow. Armando Baycott is I mean, hes the player of the year. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care who wins the national championship under what circumstances they win it, uh, how they make it look along the way. Armando Baycott is not only the best rebounder in college basketball, which I've been saying since the very beginning of the year. Everybody said he was a scrub, he was this, he was that. Well, then when they start saying that he's the best in the ACC, well, no shit, he was the best in the ACC last year. And, and he didn't even have the best numbers, but of course you had people with inflated numbers last year. He's proven to be the best in the ACC for multiple years. He was third best. He was ranked third best in all the country three weeks into the season, four weeks into the season. And people were saying, oh, but look at who they played and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? What's wrong with who they played? Yeah, they played a couple scrubs. Who hasn't? Any blue blood or, you know, power conference team is going to play some lower tier conference or you know for the lack of a better description basically junior college teams at the start of the season that is how they get their scrimmages in they go and they play tournaments sometimes lower tier tournaments for the same reason but they always go play in a bigger tournament something like the ACC Big Ten Challenge, things like that. North Carolina under Hubert Davis in his first year has proven that not only was Roy Williams still the best recruiter in all of college basketball, but that he had a mind like nobody else. Look at all these people. Look at the people that he's got. I've been preaching Baycott since he came to North Carolina, and now everybody wants to jump on the, Bank the Baycott bandwagon. But look at, you know, when he got... Brady Manick from Oklahoma, and everybody's like, why would you want him? He's this, he's that, and he proved to be a stud. Look at him. Anyway, guys, go Heels. I'm going to say one thing real quick. We've cashed in two major, major plays in the last 72 hours, one being the NHL game of the week. That was on Wednesday. That was an easy, easy, well, I say easy winner. It was an easy winner up until the third period where offense pretty much slowed down and went to nothing. Then half of that third period where there was a lot of offense, a lot of shots on goal and defense really stepped up. The go Both goalies did a great, great job. We had the Chicago Blackhawks, Anaheim Ducks, over five and a half goals. That is the first game of the week, game of the month, any game that's rated game of the week or higher for all of 2022 that did not cash before the third period. Most of them have cashed not only in the second period, most of them have cashed within the first few minutes of the second period. So we've barely needed over 20 minutes to cash tickets. Every single one. Even the ones where we were taking a side, not a total, because we've taken a lot of those as well, they were pretty much over from the start. A two, three, sometimes even four goal lead in the first period that carried on throughout the game. This one was the first one that went down to the wire where we very well could have lost the game. Luckily, um, after a power play didn't was not successful on behalf of the Blackhawks, their offense was looking tiresome, we'll say. They weren't they weren't shooting smart shots. They you know, accurately they weren't putting it anywhere near the net. Um, it came time where you know, when you're down by a goal, I do think they pulled their goalie a little bit too early. I wouldn't have done it with still, you know, 90 seconds left to go. But they did so, and the Blackhawks made a great defensive stop, pushed one about midway down ice to leave a man wide open, no goalie. Pushed it through, empty netter, six goals, boom, winner. And another game of the week cash, five units picked up. So just on Wednesday alone, just just in that game right there, picking up five units, we did have a one and two day in the premium plays as far as NHL goes. But again, we've been so hot in NHL, five losing days in a row really wouldn't make an overall significant impact on the total of the season of how much profit we've made. Tonight, obviously, as everybody knows, if you've been with me for any length of time, knows that when we get into these longer seasons, NBA, NHL, 
Major League Baseball, things like that. Something that doesn't, that will carry for multiple, multiple months. Um, obviously, in college football and the NFL, they carry multiple months, but we don't do it there because again, there's a limited amount of games for every team with the NHL. I mean, with the NFL, you're still playing under 20 games. Um, you know, even playoff teams, a lot of the times are playing under 20 games, college football, you're only playing 12 games in the regular season. So we do not do more than one game of the year. We only do one. It is usually always within regular season play, or at least it always has been. We have had one NFL game uh, that was a postseason game, and that was in the NFC Championship a few years back. That was a game of the year. But in the NHL, the NBA, and in baseball, we usually, if they rank out this way, will have two game of the years every year. One at the first half of the season, and we always rank our half seasons by their all-star break. So... You, we we say that from the very start of the season to the All-Star break is your first half, and then post-All-Star break to the start of the postseason is your second half, or through the postseason can be your second half. And if one ranks out pre-All-Star and post-All-Star, we will release two Game of the Year plays, if there are two. Um, this year being that we did not get to release our Game of the Year due to COVID postponements right there about three weeks <clears throat> Two weeks, three weeks prior to Christmas, or whenever that was, I can't remember right offhand, but we had a game of the year set up, and then of course, two hours later, the game gets postponed because of the Omicron outbreaks, or whatever the hell it was. But anyway, so we ended up having to scratch that, didn't get to play it, we came back and we ended up having a game of the year in late January, early February, an easy 10-unit winner. And I told everybody right then and there, I said, if another one ranks out between now and the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs, I said, I won't release one in the playoffs just because we released one after Christmas. Even though the All-Star break, you know, we, we, we were still in line. But because of everything I said, I want it to still be in the regular season. If one ranks out, I will release it. We will have a second one. Well, that is today. So the other game that I was hinting around all week long, I was telling you about an NBA play. I was telling you about a college basketball play for a potential game of the month. And I was telling you about another one that I kept making you think was a college basketball play, but it wasn't. I didn't want to give you a lot of information on it because I didn't want to get people's hopes up. I didn't know what the goalie situation was going to be because both of these teams had made significant changes in the way they're rotating goalies and the schedule for them over the past two weeks. It's worked in some ways for one of them. It's failed miserably for another. And so again, as I'm wondering when and where they're going to try to revert back to their normal or their original style schedule and rotation... That's why you you know you don't ever want to make a, a judgment call days ahead of time. Well, first thing this morning, obviously, I start looking at some some information, and on paper, it looks as though the goalie matchup that I want is going to happen. Now, again, take that with a grain of salt when you get it that early because you don't know, and then you got to wait to figure out for sure. Who's going to take the ice during the skate around? Obviously, if you're going to have a a goalie take the ice, spend the most time in net, that's who they've got lined up. You usually always have at least one backup goalie um, go out there, skate around, get somewhat loose just in case. Well, for both of these teams that that are in question, both goalies went out. One of them didn't bring a backup goalie out. The other one only brought a backup goalie out for about 15 minutes. He only got in net for about three minutes. So it's obvious what goalies are going to be used tonight. And unless things just, you know, unless there's just drastic things change, everything has lined up the way that we want. And I have locked in a game of the year in the NHL, our our two of two game of the year for the NHL, our second half of the season game of the year, still ranked as high as the first one. I still like it just as much. Still locked in a 10-unit banger. And, guys, this is going to be a follow-up to two massive plays that we've hit all within the last 72 hours. And I believe that we're going to be able to hit our long-shot profit goal for this week once this one cashes. 
and we still potentially have a big game for Sunday along with the NASCAR race, along with other premium and daily top plays. So it's going to be a big day. I'm not going to tell you what NHL game that it is in, but I will tell you that it is an 805 puck drop. Now there's multiple games. There's two, hell, there might even be three, 805 PM games. So again, you can you know, um, you know, imagine, try to guess all you want, what game it's in, who the teams are, what the play is, you know, go ahead. But just remember, you may have a good guess. You may think you know, but if you don't, you're going to be sitting there wagering something that, well, I'll tell you this, you're going to try to guess what it is, and you're going to go out there and make a significant investment into a game because you think that's the the game that I'm playing in, and you think that whatever your pick is is the, is the pick that I am playing. Just know that while who knows, maybe you're right, you've got a better chance of being wrong because this play is not only the only game that I'm playing in the 805 slots. It's the only pick. So think of all the other picks you could make at 805 because of multiple games going on. I only have one game and one pick going in the 805 games. So if that tells you anything, if nothing else even ranked out good enough to be a lean, don't go out there and risk putting game of the year type money on something that I may not even be playing. So game of the year, and I will, and I am going to stand by exactly what I said the last time that when we released our first half of the season game of the year uh, for NHL that was a winner. That one we did, I think it was the cheapest I had ever sold an NHL game of the year. Those are usually 200 bucks for the play. They come with a seven-day pure profit guarantee. It is the highest rank that a game could ever be for me. There will never be anything higher than a game of the year. And so being that it's at, it's usually $199, comes with the pure profit guarantee, but I decided to do it for $99. And I said to everybody after that game cashed, I said, if we have another one before the season ends and we go into the playoffs, I am going to do it for $99 as well. There were some people that missed out on the play because, you know, I don't, for whatever reason, and they were upset that, you know, they didn't get to partake in it and they didn't get to obviously get it for half of what they would have normally spent. So I said, if we have another one, I'll do it. Don't wait until the last minute. At 8 o'clock, your chances of getting this play are over. So go get it before then. It is live on the site now. When you go to chasewins.com, hit the purchase tab. You'll see it. It's the very top one, and you'll get it. Now, if you want a better bang for your buck, you can spend $249 and get the remainder of the NHL season, which gives you every premium and daily top play from right now all the way through the playoffs and the Stanley Cup Finals. So months of hockey left that you will get for 249 bucks. Now, those do not include games of the week, month, year, all that stuff. But you will, as long as you buy it before the game starts today, you'll be able to utilize it. You will get the game of the year for free, and that'll be a $100 purchase that you don't have to make. The game of the year is a $200 value in and of itself, because that's usually what I would charge. Well, for $249, you'll get that game, and you'll get the rest of the premium and daily top plays for the season. And you'll be able to make your money back today, and then some, off that one game. And not to mention, at 305, we do have a daily top play going. Um, so... Keep that in mind. That one's already locked in. There's plenty of other action that I'm looking at in the NHL today. Some of it I have not locked in yet, so it's still up in the air. I've got NBA locked in. I've already got one underdog locked in um, for today, and I'm looking at another kind of later NBA game. And then we've got action going tonight in college basketball. Um, we're going to talk about that here in just a second because that's a free play that I'm going to give you. But a bunch of action for Saturday. For Sunday, we've got NASCAR. So uh, Patrick will have a NASCAR card going Sunday. We'll have NHL. We'll have NBA. And, of course, we'll have college basketball. So touching on college basketball for a second, again, congratulations to the North Carolina Tar Heels advancing to the Elite Eight, having to play uh, this year's Cinderella, which is St. Peter's. And, again, um, St. Peter's has proven to probably be the team with the most heart this year. But one thing they don't have is – Elite rebounding like North Carolina. Now, you, everybody has been comparing what 
you know, than what they did against Purdue because Purdue has the biggest person in college basketball. And, and But if you actually look at it, the only reason he gets any rebounds is because he's seven foot tall. If you actually look at the way he rebounds, he's not a good rebounder. He's not even above average. He is below average as a rebounder. He has above average numbers because he is an oak tree. He is a human tree. But other than that, he's not very good. So I really do believe that if you look at the teams that they beat, they beat Kentucky. Yeah, they all right. So they keep doing these amazing things. Now they beat Purdue. I think when they have to go up there and play Baycott and, and a North Carolina team that is just so fundamentally talented and so unselfish and can be a scoring threat in so many ways and will out-rebound Dennis Rodman, I think it's going to come as a shock. It's going to kind of be just one of these deer-in-the-headlight moments for a minute. And if you take your eyes off Carolina for even a second, Hubert Davis will have those boys running the floor on you, and a 10-point lead will come like that. Brady Manick, R.J. Davis, Leaky Black, Armando Baycott, those guys are in sync. They are confident. They are in rhythm. And you know what? They know they can win this. They know they're a win away from the Final Four and having as good a shot as anybody, probably the best shot out of anybody outside of Kansas. Well, I say Kansas. Kansas was my pick to win it all at the beginning of the season. Um, we talked about that on video. So, I mean, obviously, if they win, that will be great. I am pulling for the Tar Heels to win, but, um, you know, it'll be a significant payday if Kansas does, so either one of those two teams, but of course, Duke winning is going to be one of those things that the media wants so bad because it's Coach K's last year, and what did I tell you before the tournament? I said, Duke is not a Final Four team. They're not. Truth be told, they're a Sweet 16 team that will probably make the Elite Eight, and then, you know, that's as far as their talent can take them. They've got to, they're going to have to have a little bit of help. Obviously, they've got a favorable matchup with Arkansas tonight. So that's going to be your free play. I'm going to take Duke. And right now, Duke's laying three and a half. It dropped from four to three and a half. But I'm buying Duke to three. And the reason I'm buying Duke to three is because I want it with that even number. And. I just think they're going to get help tonight with calls. I really do. I hate saying that, but I just believe that it's the story of all stories in college basketball. You know, quite possibly the most famous basketball coach of all time in Coach K. You know, he wants to ride off into the sunset. He did not get to do it with his last game in Cameron because the Tar Heels slapped the shit out of the Blue Devils. But, you know, now going into the postseason, going into the tournament, getting favorable matchups for the first two rounds, then having to play a little bit of competition, but now he gets Arkansas. And while Arkansas has an elite defense that can stop anybody, they don't actually match up well to the way Duke can move the ball around the perimeter and shoot the three. So if they get hot from three, which is quite likely, then it's going to be difficult for Arkansas anyway. So if Duke can can build a six to eight point comfortable lead and sustain that for multiple minutes, then it's going to be hard for Arkansas to do it. And that's when Duke can speed things up. Coach K will do what he does and show why he is one of the best because he'll have the boys really run Arkansas just flat out of gas and they won't need anything. But if they can't keep that six to eight point lead sound and you know keep it in lock without going down, I think the refs will get involved, they'll get fouls, they'll get what they need to push it over 10 points and stay comfortable enough to come out and win the game. And being that I do think they will get favorable calls, and I think towards the end when fouls become an issue and people start going to the line over and over, that's where I think Duke could take that five, six, seven point lead that they would have, push it over 10 and make it to where Arkansas cannot get within five points as the game closes out. So I'm going to take Duke tonight. I'm going to take a minus three by buying it down from three and a half to three, laying a dollar 35 as my juice and my tax. And that's going to be my premium play to give you for free for Saturday. Again, NHL game of the week going 
tonight, ten, or game of the week, game of the year, excuse me, second half season game of the year, 10 unit, biggest, biggest rated play we can possibly have tonight, 8.05 p.m. puck drop. The play will be available on the site for purchase for half price, 99 bucks until 8 p.m. on the dot tonight. And I will tell you this, not only do we cash in the game of the week on Wednesday in the, in the NHL, we we followed that up Thursday with a seven-unit game of the week in the NCAA tournament on Duke and Texas Tech to go over the total, and that was a big, big winner. And that was going, <coughs> excuse me, that was going over 135 points, seven units, and it was a 12.4 units of pure profit made on Thursday and that really set the week over the edge and set the tone for what we wanted to do and then last night we did we did have a little bit of struggle in college basketball we picked up UNC on the money line plus a dollar 30 but we lost our big UNC uh, UCLA play is over 141 points and had they just called one of the fouls that out of the six that they should have in the last few minutes on either team there was a lot they didn't call on either team it would have pushed it over that total because there was 139 points scored, so it was literally a bucket away. I'd make that play a million times over again. So that one right there, obviously, we basically, that killed our college basketball day, losing that. But, again, what are you going to do? I, uh, Miami ended up killing Iowa State, which I think was probably the biggest surprise of, of the night overall. Kansas does advance, so... Well, they're on to the Elite Eight. I think they win one more. We, we'll see Kansas in the national championship. I mean, I, they were my pick at the beginning of the year. And obviously, while I want Carolina to win it, I still think that Kansas has certain tools that other teams don't, especially defensively. So, But we did sweep in the NBA last night, 1-0, underdog play again. Underdogs always hot in the NBA. Hornets plus four and a half, outright winner. And then in the NHL, another four and O sweep day. Capitals, Sabres over five and a half, easy winner. Winnipeg Jets minus a dollar sixty on the money line. Flyers, Avalanche over five and a half goals. And then the Calgary Flames on the puck line minus a dollar forty five for a four and O sweep in the NHL, a one and O sweep in the NBA, and another day of profit here at VentureSportsAndChaseWins.com. So guys, after profiting literally every day, except for Monday, where all we did was lose juice because we went one and one, profit on Tuesday, profit on Wednesday, huge profit on Thursday, profit on Friday, we've got big, big profits. We're going to look to beat Thursday's profits of 12 and a half units by cashing in a 10-unit game of the year in the NHL, a daily top play, of course, going in the NHL and potentially a daily top play going in a later game, which I'm not going to tell you the sport. We'll just wait and see. But plenty of premium play action. Get the remainder of the NHL season for $249, and you'll get the game of the year included tonight absolutely free or $99. It's half price. You can get the game of the year and comes with a seven-day pure profit guarantee. You win or you get all plays premium and daily top plays in all sports for seven days. Absolutely free. No questions asked. Go get it. It's on the site. Can't wait to see you in the winner's circle. If you have any questions, let us know. Reach out to me on Twitter. We've got some big stuff coming up for tomorrow and at the start of the week. Something brand new we're releasing. The promos that we've been hinting around that some are going to start, some are going to be ending. So keep that in mind if you haven't got on board yet. And guys, if you're not with us already, Hope to see you soon. For all of you that have been with us and are currently with us, as I say every day and as we do every day, we'll see you in the winter circle. Good luck, and we'll see you back tomorrow.